But yeah, hey guys, uh, I'm Gymnast86, and today I'm going to be running The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword for you guys. Uh, with me, I have my fellow co-commentator, Papernicus. Hello, I'm Papernicus. I'm a glitch hunter and router for this game, and I hope I can give you some insight on this uh, insane route today. Yeah, because this game is uh, its a bit convoluted to run and to explain, but we're going to do our best. Uh, so some initial information before we get started. Uh, Skyward Sword Any% percent runs do take place on Hero Mode files. And what Hero Mode means in Skyward Sword is that we get to skip all the in-game cutscenes, uh, we get to take double damage from all damage sources, and we also get a much more powerful Skyward Strike attack for when we get the Goddess Sword. Uh, so with uh, that in mind, we're also playing on the Japanese version of the game. And I believe we had a file name incentive uh, last I checked, I believe LAMP in all caps was in the lead, if we can have confirmation on that. I am pulling that up for you right now. It looks like... I always have to scroll for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It looks like LAMP is indeed the winner by $200 exactly. All right. Looks like... All in yes, all caps. in all caps. That's the important part. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so with that, I will give a countdown and we will get started. So five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so starting out here, we're going to be skipping some good old cutscenes. Uh, the last time that Skyward Sword was shown off at AGDQ was at AGDQ 2020, about one year ago. And at that point, the run estimate was two hours and 30 minutes. But you'll notice today that the run estimate is only 1 hour and 40 minutes. And if I play well, we can actually hopefully showcase a sub 1 hour 30 minute run here today for you guys. Because we have discovered some pretty big things in the uh, past year that have helped whittle down this game to as short as it is now. Yeah, so right here you can see um, him talking to Fledge. That's not necessary for the story progression, but we need to do it for some tricks we can use uh, where we can use it later. Um, so he has also some tutorial stuff still. Uh, unfortunately, we have to do it even though we're playing on hero mode. Um, the professor recognizes us playing on hero mode, but still wants to give us a tutorial. <laughs> He's like, oh, wow, you're playing on hero mode. Well, here's all the tutorial information anyway. But yeah, so uh, we talked to Fledge in the Night Academy. Not required in a casual playthrough, but very important for the speedrun. Uh, we're also going to save Professor Hornwell's pet Remlet up on the roof of the Academy over here. And we'll do a little bit of a precise jump here to skip over a text trigger that the Professor would normally uh, try to talk to us with. Just saves a few seconds there. Gotta save the animals. Yes, like all good GDQ runs, Skyward Sword Any% percent does indeed save the animals. <laughs> And saving the animals is actually faster, so it's a double win. And we're pushing boxes, running up walls, doing some rolls. We can go grab his pet and then bring it back to him. So obviously, uh, this not being required in standard gameplay, uh, why are we doing it in the speedrun? Well, uh, Whenever we do these specific events, right, like saving the Remlet or talking to Fledge, uh, the game sets a value in its memory to know that we've done those events so that, you know, we can't do them again. And we call these values scene flags because these values are specific to whatever scene we're currently on. And in this case, we're on the Skyloft scene because we're on Skyloft at the beginning of the game. And these uh, flags will come into use when we do a trick coming up called Back in Time, uh, which we're going to be performing shortly here. To perform back in time, I first need to get to the game over screen, and the fastest way to do that is to die via the infamous killing post that we have here. This is usually where we'd get the, you know, oh man, I'm so bad at this video game, because yeah, it only took me three gym. minutes to die. So early. <laughs> I think you should right, just yes, now reset here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be resetting here, but first we're going to hit continue, and then after I hit continue, I will reset the game using the uh, home button. And now Link is going to just kind of fall into the title screen. Uh, this right here is back in time, whenever we have the ability to play the game while the title screen is up. And this is basically our bread and butter for uh, most of the run. Uh, back in time is a very powerful glitch, or well, Rather, the techniques we can do in Back in Time are very powerful. 
So to start off, we're going to be running up here, and we're going to intentionally fall over uh, the edge of this fence to respawn past the closed gates that would normally take us over, or over to the upper part of the Night Academy. Uh, I'm going to be selecting file 1 and then saving at this bird statue, but I'm not going to be starting file 1, because I just want to save file 1 on this weird state of the Skyloft map right here. And then I will be running over here towards the goddess statue, because we have to go and uh, place the emerald tablet right now while in back in time. So thankfully this layer uh, of the Skyloft map just happens to have the goddess statue open by default, uh, which is really nice. And we'll go in here and get the goddess sword so that we can get the emerald tablet, raise the pedestal, and then put in the tablet. Yeah, um, it's important to note that uh, selecting files and back in time can have like effects on uh, the area we're in, so it's going to also be very important um, for later. And as, as well, we are going to do in this right now um, with the Ferran Pillar and Bit because we don't want to get the tunic right now, but we still want to get the Ferran Pillar, so that's why we're doing what we're doing right now. Right, so uh, this first instance of back in time that we're seeing right here is to perform a trick called reverse bit magic. Uh, now, what reverse bit magic basically is, um, is that I'm going to be starting my first file uh, as we see the light that forms the Farron Pillar uh, hit the clouds in the uh, next loading zone here. Uh, or during this next cutscene. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and start my file right before that happens. Because if I start my file and then the Farron Pillar forms up during the fade out of my file starting, uh, the game will actually apply the value of the Farron Pillar being open to the file that I have, right? And this is useful because now we have the Farron Pillar open, but we didn't get to go to the next sequence. Uh, that normally happens afterwards, where, you know, you get the hero's tunic and uh, the headmaster says that, like, you know, it's time for you to go leave Skyloft, because we don't want to do that yet. Yeah. We still need the fire. But, yeah. But none of the other information that happened during that last sequence got saved, right? So, like, the game didn't save the fact that we got the goddess sword, or that we raised the tablet pedestal, or that we, uh... But actually, we do see that the emerald tablet is actually in there still because that's uh, just connected an effect the of pillar. having the pillar open. Yeah. And so this time, I'm actually just going to strike the tablet pedestal and then I'm going to leave because there are still some things that we have to do on Skyloft. Uh, most notably, we need to save our Loftwing because if we don't save our Loftwing, then we're not going to be able to get off of Skyloft, which would be a bit of an issue. So we got to go do that. In general, this is going to be a little bit of a setup phase um, because this run mostly going to um, use Skyloft stuff. We we the Skyloft scene flags, um, so we have to do a lot of stuff here. So we're safe for the rest of the run, and we don't really need much more setup, and we can go as quick as we want to. Right, all of the like scene flag setup that we're doing here on Skyloft uh, won't really kick into effect for like ten more minutes or so. So yeah. we're talking about it now, but it's important to note about it now because there's also like a lot of nuances that uh, come into play with it. Although right now we're basically just going to be running across Skyloft for the next minute here. Uh, regarding the movement of this game, generally we're just going to be sprinting everywhere, of course, because sprinting is a lot faster uh, than regular just walking around, as long as we have the stamina for it. So uh, typically what we want to do uh, for stamina management is we want to um, basically just let the last quarter of the stamina meter refill, because the last quarter is actually uh, only used at half the rate that the first three quarters are used, but it recharges at the same rate. So we basically, uh, during long sprinting sections, we'll just keep on reusing that one part of the stamina meter instead. Also, and if we have extra stamina, we can pretty much just use it for rolling, because each roll saves about a frame over sprinting. Right here, we're just gonna enter this house and leave, just say hi, uh, <laughs> Kukil's <Yeah>. mom. <laughs> uh, but the main reason is that there's actually a, a scene flag that sets here that we're gonna use later. Um, very convenient, so we're gonna take it. Yeah, like, the, the scene flags that Skyloft holds, or really that, like, any uh, area of the game holds, like, span, like, the entire story of the game. So it's really lucky that the ones we want to set, we can just kind of get here at the beginning of the yeah. game. Otherwise, the route would not work out the way that it currently does. It's very, very convenient. And also quite fast. 
as well. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, don't have to go very far out of our way. Yeah. Like a time general is a rather slow trick, so if we want to make it like um, useful, we have to really you know put stuff in, and it need needs to have like a big impact. Otherwise, we're not gonna do back in time. All right, so right here, I am intentionally taking damage because surprise, surprise, I'm gonna want to do back in time again later. <laughs> uh, in total, uh, this run actually has 22 intentional deaths. Uh, so we will be intentionally taking a lot of damage in this run from various sources. And this is why being on hero mode and taking double damage is an extra advantage because it allows us to damage ourselves down to zero hearts sooner. Yeah, otherwise it would be a little bit annoying sometimes. Right. Okay, so after we watch this cutscene with Zelda, I'm actually going to go over to the bird statue that's right here, and I'm going to be saving and quitting uh, my file. And I'm going to be copying this file from file 1 to file 3. Because uh, part of what we're trying to set up here in the beginning is we need a file that has three specific uh, flags on it. We need a file that has saved the Loftwing, uh, but we also need to have that file have the Farron Pillar open and also have the ability to dive off of our Loftwing before we save our Loftwing. Yeah. So it's a kind of confusing set of flags. Um, and you also normally can't get the ability to dive off of your Loftwing before saving your Loftwing. Yeah. So we have to do some back-in-time shenanigans to make that work. Yeah, mainly we're going to use that because back-in-time is just sometimes uh, pretty crash-heavy. Uh, and we need that exact file to just avoid crashes if we want to ever leave Skyloft and back-in-time. So that's what we have to do, basically. So now we call our Loftwing and we are going into the Loftwing tutorial section here. Uh, this is basically just an auto-scroller, so uh, we can read uh, one donation now, I believe. Or we're just flying around. Sure thing. First of all, I think it's very important to mention that Wand of Gamelon is now at 130,000. Very, very, very close to 131,000 out of the... Uh, 160,000. So we're getting really close, everyone. Just over 29,000 left. Please make sure you get your donations in for that. It will be coming up next. Would love to see that. Do we still have time for one? Uh, yes. Okay, great. We have a $1,000 wow. donation. <laughs> this is from Incoherent, who says, I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. Excellent. <laughs> but I'll have to, unless you all donate too. All right, so now we're coming up on the uh, Wing Ceremony cutscene skip, which hopefully I'll be able to get. Uh, this is basically just a cutscene skip where I have to hopefully uh, mash for a side hop. All right, so very nice. good. Uh, we essentially side hopped out of the cutscene trigger for that cutscene. Uh, and this allows us to go over here and just die on the west cliff of Skyloft immediately afterwards. And so being able to skip that cutscene saves about 75 seconds. So that's a pretty good time save. And of course, we're going to be doing back in time yeah. again. This time, uh, quite complicated one. <laughs> yeah, so this is the file duping uh, back in time iteration. So what I'm going to be doing for this back in time is I'm going to be selecting file two and then going back to the splash screen. And then I'm going to be uh, opening up the splash screen again. The splash screen is going to then load the contents from file three, but still believe that file two is selected. And then by saving at this bird statue, it'll essentially copy the contents from file 3 to file 2. But the key difference here is that file 2 is like, you know, if you look at file 2, it doesn't look like it's copied. It still just looks like a new game file. And that's because the game hasn't like properly updated, uh, like thinking that file 2 uh, is like, you know, basically a copy of file 3 right now. And this is important because we're going to use the fact that it still thinks file 2 is a new game file to perform this next trick called a reverse bit warp, uh, where we started our file and then hit the loading zone that takes us to the sky, which is going to start this file in the sky. Right Now, if you'll remember, file 3 uh, that we copied to file 2 has not saved the Loftwing, right? Uh, we copied file 1 to file 3 and then saved the Loftwing on file 1. So, despite the fact that we have not technically saved our Loftwing on this file, we can still fly with our Loftwing and we can specifically hit this Phi text trigger right here, which gives us the ability to dive off of our Loftwing, uh, which is what we wanted. So now we're going to be going and uh, we're going to save the Loftwing on this file properly. 
And so the fastest way to get back to where our Loftwing is is to just do a death warp. So I'm gonna get hit in the air by these Octorox yeah. over here to help with that. Because remember, the last place we actually saved uh, while in gameplay was at the Waterfall Statue 453, which it's where we did the copy. So by death warping, we'll just get put back there. Yeah, so as you can already see, it's kind of complicated to keep track of what's <laughs> happening, uh, but we guarantee it'll yeah. all work out, so don't worry. I mean, this one was quite complicated, but yeah. Um, it's just important that we basically use like something from each file, it's, and that's why we made everything the way we had to. But now we can finally save our loft wing again. <laughs> Somehow he got uh, <laughs> back in the cage. Goose's, Goose was really persistent yeah. and got him back in there again. And All right, so... Uh, this is going to take us back to the Loftwing tutorial, but this time we have the ability to dive off of our Loftwing, which you normally do not have during the Loftwing tutorial. Yeah, normally. Uh, so instead of actually doing the Loftwing tutorial, we're just gonna kind of fly over here. <laughs> uh, normally the uh, Loftwing tutorial has invisible boundaries that the Loftwing can't cross because it wants to keep you contained to a specific area. But those boundaries do not apply to Link, so instead, uh, we can dive off of the Loftwing, and then I can begin skydiving forward, and I can enter into the Farron Pillar that we opened up right at the beginning of the run. Uh, as Link slowly moves forward here. Yeah. So this is how we now get into the Farron region, uh, despite never, you know, doing the Wing Ceremony or doing the follow Fi sequence that you normally need to get the Goddess Sword and getting the Hero's Clothes and all that stuff. Yeah. So, down into Farron we go. That's how we can enter Farron without ever needing the tunic. And it's also going to be a good showcase of how we're going to enter Farron in back in time. Yeah, so back in time will like always start us um, on Skyloft in the exact same position. Um, but back in time is particularly powerful because we can take back in time to so many locations in this game. In particular, we can take it to Farron, which is very useful for this run. So that's what we're going to be doing next. So I'm going to be saving my files here in the sealed grounds, and then I'm going to be dying once again to do back in time. Uh, this is actually a special layer of the sealed grounds that you're not supposed to be able to like reach casually. Uh, this is sealed grounds layer zero. Uh, the reason that we're on this weird state is because of the fact that we never got uh, the hero's tunic. So like, yeah. there's no Deku Babas on this map, and there's no fence that's like preventing us from going down to the spiral early like there normally is. Yeah. They are basically just meaning a different version of an area. So the game, game team keeps track, we are layer, um, what like should be shown in Seal Grounds, depending on what story flags you have, and story events you did. All right, so now we come upon one of the longest back in time sequences in the entire run. Yeah. I'm going to start by copying file three to file one because we don't need file one anymore. Uh, and I'm going to be coming over here. I'm going to bonk into this tree. This is going to load in the scene flag information from file one. And uh, because we've progressed file one enough, it has the upper academy gates here opened up, which allows us to get to the upper academy without having to like void out again as we did at the beginning. Then I'm going to talk to that statue with file one, save file two, reselect file one to open the gate back up. <laughs> And uh, now we're going to be on our way uh, over to the Farron region, except this time we're going to get there in back in time. Uh, the reason I needed to save file two was because uh, file two has saved the Loftwing. And so by saving file two, we basically uh, load in the flag that says we can call our Loftwing and allows us to fly over here and get into the sky. And then we will load the, the, the sky with the file we've just set up with diving and everything. And again, the reason is uh, we couldn't load with uh, other file because that would crash uh, back in time. So we have to enter the Loftwing tutorial. And luckily, though, we have diving on our file. So we can do what you just saw us do in normal gameplay and fly into the fire pill here. Uh, it's also important to note that it's uh, that we have to select specific files here, uh, mainly to avoid some cutscenes and stuff. Um, so we watch the intro cutscene on file 2 in Seal Ground. So by selecting that when entering here, the game is not going to play the cutscene again, and we can just... Uh, it's just a little bit quicker, because... Yeah. And we're also going to save file 1 here uh, for later. Uh, because... That's going to be uh, like... That's the file before Loftwing, so just keep that in mind. And we'll explain later what it exactly means. 
Okay, so our goal with this back in time iteration is we're trying to get all the way into the Skyview Temple, right? Um, so like with the Upper Academy gates that I mentioned earlier, um, we could use that log that uh, links between the sealed grounds and this behind the temple area here uh, to completely skip having to go through the sealed ground sequence like with Impa and everything. Um, and we're essentially going to be using a similar technique to uh, skip having to, you know, find all the Kikwis here in Farron Woods uh, and get the slingshot. Yeah. This is uh, Farron Woods here. layer zero right now, so there's no Kikwis here. Again, it's just because of our files not having the right uh, story events on our files, so the game's like, yeah, it should be on layer zero. Uh, so there's no Kikwis. Um, so the one thing preventing us right now to enter the woods, to enter Skyview, is the vine that's not down, but we don't have the slingshot. But what we can do here is uh, we can we have that flag um, set up from earlier. So what we can do here is we can die on our file one, um, which is then uh, allowing us uh, to basically reload the area and the game looking at our scene flags from that file and that file has the scene flag for the vine so the game is like okay good okay you have that scene flag so let's just put down the vine and uh yeah <laughs> that way we enter deep woods it's to so, know that's uh, entering kikwil's house by the way so that's lowering the vine right so yeah you can you can sort of think like of each of these scene flags that we're talking about you can kind of think of them as like having individual numbers within their scene uh, so, like, you know, exiting Kupil's house on Skyloft is scene flag 5, and having the deep, the vine to the deep woods down here is also scene flag 5 in Farron Woods. So because they have the same number, um, selecting one of them and back in time will have the other one happen uh, if, like, you know, you happen to be in Farron here. Yeah, so next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna load um, deep woods, and it's gonna be important... Um, to be loaded on layer one because we want to have a cutscene happen here. So first we're gonna text file two, which has uh, the flag for the crystal being hit. So the crystal's gonna hit and that's gonna activate this um, cutscene here. And uh, right after this cutscene, we're gonna have the intro cutscene here and we will do the reverse bit warp. <laughs> uh, this time we're gonna use coordinates from our files because this is not a new game file. Um, and then the game's actually gonna read the coordinates on our file three and apply them to Skyview. Right, so that was a yeah. lot that happened all at once. Uh, <laughs> but basically, uh, the end result is that, um, if you remember, we saved file two um, back on Skyloft during Back in Time at the Upper Academy Bird Statue. And essentially what that allowed us to do is when we reverse bit warped into the Skyview Temple, uh, the game instead spawned us at the coordinates of that save statue instead of spawning us into the normal entrance yeah. of uh, the Skyview Temple, which is why we like skipped the first two thirds of Skyview Temple like that. Uh, we do have to go into this room and then immediately go back out, though, because nothing inside the Skyview Temple is loaded properly when you do a reverse bit warp like that. But if you just change rooms yeah. uh, and then go back in, then that will be fine. We needed it for the rope here, otherwise we couldn't uh, go to the boss and the boss key. Yeah, this rope doesn't spawn in when you yeah. do a reverse bit warp, so... Kinda need the rope to get across. And I'll be shaking the rope to make this Koblen get off. I'm gonna be doing a safety save here because uh, dying in Skyview Temple is like one of the worst possible yeah. mistakes you can make uh, at this point in the run, so we definitely don't want that to happen if we hadn't safety yeah. saved. Of course, we do still have six hearts, so like I would need to mess up pretty badly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for dying like yeah, that. The main reason why it would be All bad right. is like we have done a lot of copies and deletions and stuff, so it would be hard to recreate doing this what we just did. Yeah. So right here, we're gonna do some skyward strikes to hit these vines. Uh, we don't have a slingshot, but we do have a longer skyward strike because of the hero mode we're on. So that's allowing us to do this right here and allowing us to get the boss key this way right the uh the oh i'm surprised i didn't make that yeah that okay. was pretty close let's try that again <laughs> yeah thankfully the boss key is not located too far away yeah gotta swing with a bit more momentum there we go pretty tricky that movement here there is a nice tutorial yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the vines the vines in like any zelda yeah. can sometimes be tricky Right there. And then we can take yeah. the vines back. 
uh, to the boss door over here. And then we can put the boss key in. Uh, the boss keys always start at the exact same orientation, so we just memorize like how we need to orient the Wii Remote to fit them into the slot each time. And now it's time for our first boss of the run, Girahim 1. Uh, so the first phase of the Girahim fight, um, it's basically just like you want to bait Girahim to one side with your sword, and then you want to attack him from the other direction. Uh, with the motion controls in combat that this game has. So he's over to the right, we attack from the left and then stab. Basically just do this four times and then that'll be it for the first phase. As long as I don't move too quickly. And as long as I can quick spin. This. There we go. Alright, so at the start of the second phase, I'm gonna try to get a hit off him immediately by doing a jump slash. Uh, this will work if, like, he gives us the correct attack, but if he didn't, so... That's cool, isn't it? Darts right away. Spawning in the darts right away. And <sighs> jumping back, wow. This is not, not a good start for the RNG. <laughs> yeah. So basically darts are just, uh, t time loss. <laughs> and teleporting as well, so, uh, want to, want to avoid all of that. Or darts. Yeah, vertical darts are the worst because he's always forced to jump back from them. Yeah. So we want either diagonal or horizontal darts. And so not very good RNG there, but that's fine. Usually, like, if you get bad RNG, it only wastes, like, yeah. 20 seconds or so. So not the end of the world, but it is kind of annoying. Could probably do a donation, right? <laughs> yeah, we can do a donation right now. Awesome. I have so many donations for you, so you let me know whenever you want donations. First of all, I think it's important to mention, as I'm going to be doing probably the whole run, that Wand of Gamelon is up to $136,000 out of 160,000 that is. So that is less than 24,000 left. You all are doing great so far. Keep those donations coming in. We can make it happen. We also, just for you, Jim, have a $1,000 donation. Wow. From, <laughs> I know, from Matt Lold, which is amazing, who says, Hi, Jim, it's great to see you. Bruce Luck, I've been dying to watch this run as much as Link does. <laughs> That's actually really funny. <laughs> Thanks to everyone. Admittedly, I've not heard that one before. <laughs> that one's good. <laughs> Thanks to everyone at GDQ and at the Prevents Cancer Foundation for the great work you do. Happy to forego a couple of new lawnmowers to donate to a fantastic cause. Matt does love his lawnmowers. That's a very interesting fact to know about someone. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, thank you very much for that, Matt. Uh, as we continue through the run here, uh, we just got the uh, Ruby Tablet, which will allow us to go to the Elden region next. Uh, but first, we have to do a few things. So I'm going to be saving at this save prompt here and then manually resetting the game using the physical reset button on the Wii Remote. Um, because for some reason, if you do a reverse bit warp and then try to save and quit, the game will take you back to the splash screen anyway. Yeah, so confused which uh, file you were on. <laughs> yeah, so it's just faster to manually yeah. reset in that circumstance. And surprise, surprise, it's time for more back in time. Yeah, so file two, uh, file one, sorry, was saved in Silk Grounds at the start of the back in time sequence we did. So when we started, we're gonna show up there and we can die quickly with full damage, so that's convenient and we'll able to do back in time again. All right, so this time I'm going to be doing a reverse bit warp into the goddess statue uh, so that I can place the uh, ruby tablet on file three. So this run is kind of weird because we started this run more or less on file one, but then we kind of uh, have made, like, we beat the Skyview Temple and we're going to be beating the Earth Temple in the Elden region on file three. And then we're going to be going back to file one after Earth Temple, so it's it's a bit weird, but this this is indeed the fastest way to make it work. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just important that file uh, one is before saving a loft wing, and that's uh, why it's so difficult. Sometimes we have to switch files here and there. But yeah, reverse bit warp here. This time it's going to be a normal reverse bit warp you saw before because we're. Oh, that was a little bit too well, early. It, it would be if I didn't start yeah. the file too early, yeah. <laughs> That's okay, though. We can just try yeah. it again. That one is a little bit tricky, yeah, I, but yeah. I, I, start, I just pressed the A button a little too early. Yeah, but it's good because yeah, the, we can explain uh, why there's different uh, RBWs. Um, so, right. 
at the start we did with a new game file and it just loaded it normally. And it just so happens too that when you save a prompt, the game will for some reason kind of treat it very similar to a new game file. So we have saved at the Skyview prompt and by doing an RW with a prompt, the game will actually also load the next area normally. Just that's just the way the game is loading information with the prompt for some reason. Which is very convenient because otherwise we couldn't do this RBW because uh, the goddess statue is very, um, yeah, there's just not much space there to land. So basically every coordinate's gonna put you out of bounds. And yeah, and then we're just gonna boat out forever. So yeah, again, um, the perverse bit warp here starting and then entering the goddess statue. Alright, so we'll start later this time. Yeah. Make it into the loading zone. There we go. Alright. So it's also important that we place this tablet normally inst instead of RBMing it like the first one. We could RBM it as well, but this time we actually want a tunic. And it just so happens that the tunic cutscene always plays after a pillar cutscene, uh, the first pillar cutscene has been done. Um, and this is our first pillar cutscene we're actually watching on a gameplay file. Uh, you'll notice the cutscene is a little bit uh, glitched, um, just because that's not uh, the right stay here. Uh, but luckily we can skip cutscenes or we're not soft block. <laughs> yeah, if we couldn't skip cutscenes, this one that you briefly see right here would just kind of stay there forever. Yeah. Right, and because we just did a reverse bit warp, we have to manually reset again. Yeah. Uh, once we do our next save. Yeah, now file 3 has a tunic. Although you didn't see it, but it has now. All right, so now I'm going to do something very exciting. I'm going to start file two, and then I'm going to save and quit the game and go back to the title screen. Yeah. Uh, so this, it seems completely useless, but this will actually fix uh, which map file two is going to pull scene flags from when we select it in back in time. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, so... Um, Essentially, by saving it on Skyloft, we now have it pull flags from Skyloft. Um, beforehand, it was pulling flags from the sealed grounds, because that was the last place that we saved it while not in back in time. Which is also why we saved file one again, because we need to fix the scene index for file one as well for this yeah. upcoming back in time. It's just very important that we always have like a Skyloft uh, file here, because we did so much in Skyloft. We want to keep those uh, events still available to us. All right, so... Uh, this next back in time sequence is probably the most complicated one in the whole game. Um, I'm going to concentrate during it to make sure I don't mess anything up, so yeah. I'll just let Pepper explain things. So this one is going to be a, a very big, important one. So first of all, we're going to bonk here um, to again open the gates, but this time it's going to be file 3. Again, we fixed the scene flag, so it has now the Skyloft stuff. Um, then we're going to check the statue with file 1 and uh, bit save file 2. So the reason we check with file 1 is a little bit convoluted, but mainly uh, we want to keep whatever the event, not, like whatever number, seems like number, checking the statue is on file 1 and keep that. And then we're going to do the normal loading into the sky here. Um, so again, loading into the sky with a file that has diving and layer 3 um, to not crash. And then we're going to uh, dive into the pillar. So the idea, um, what, what you went for, want, want to RBM here, is the Lake Floria doors opening. So we're gonna first have to reach Fernwoods for that. And the UA statue, checking the UA statue, just happens to be the same number as uh, the flag that starts the cutscene for the gates. So that's very convenient. Um, so right here, we're going to enter the pillar with file one and then select file two. But one was the last file he selected, so he could just uh, wait on the title screen. So file, file two again here to just avoid the cutscene. And then um, we're going to select file three because it has the um, Skyloft flags and talking to Fledge just puts this lock down here. So he's gonna select it by opening a splash screen and he can use this to like get a little boost here a little bit faster and then right here we're going to first uh, bit save file 3 just because we want the statue coordinates uh, for later and then we're also going to bit save save and quit uh, one um, 
Which... Yeah, I, I, I resaved file three because I might have been a little bit too far away for the yeah. uh, thing that's going to happen after this. So it's important to save and quit here and do go back to the splash screen here. And the main reason is that just the, the, the statue flag tends to uh, unsets when you save and not when you save and quit. Um, we're not quite sure why, but we're glad <laughs> because we want to uh, also save file one here. And then we're going to enter uh, Farron Woods here, and we're going to the basically the moment we select the file, it's going to activate the cuts uh, the cutscene of the Lake Flory Gates. So we're going to start, skip this cutscene, and you can see like the little movement of Link that the cutscene started. So that looked perfect because we're only going to see what that means <laughs> in an hour. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah. The effect of that is not going to come back for a while. Yeah. But now that we've done that, um, we can now make our way to the Elden region, also using back in time. Yeah. Uh, so so they... I'll. Yeah. I'm basically just going back over here to the spiral to get enough fall damage to die. So yeah, uh, the, the 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 main reason, or like we want, we try to like get multiple things in. So in this back in time, we had two things. First of all, the REM we did. We're going to see later what that did. And the other thing we did was spit saving file 3 at the Behind the Table statue. And just as we did in Skyview, um, we gonna do a RBW again, a reverse bit warp. And this time we're gonna use the back Behind the Temple statue coordinates. We just saved that and back in time. And these gonna put us somewhere very cool in Elden. So first we're gonna uh, save file 2 here to get our loft wing again. Uh, we could save any file that has a loft wing, but we tend to do file 2 because, again, file 3, uh, we want to keep these statue coordinates, so we don't want to save it over. And file 2 just uh, normally don't need to be anywhere else except for Skyloft. And then again, um, we're going to select file 2, but this time we actually selected file 3 before calling loft wing. Uh, and file 3 has a tunic, so we can actually load the sky directly because tunic just uh, has more uh, sky loading zones. Right here, we're gonna use the zipper uh, to get some extra speed with the lock wing because the game is gonna get confused and gonna keep gonna keep the oh, speed. Oh, did you really have to say the game got confused? <laughs> Sorry, Ooh, no, it didn't get confused. It just got pulled in with the extra speed. Uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, starting and then entering the pillar is gonna put us out of bounds here. All right. So now. Uh, because we saved uh, file 3 at the Behind the Temple statue, we now got those coordinates to apply to us in the Elden Volcano region. And this puts us uh, pretty far out of bounds in the Elden region. And the Elden region, uh, as well as the Lanayu region in this game, just have these like huge swaths of out of bounds collision. Uh, which in this case we can kind of just use to like free climb Elden Volcano so we don't have to go through like the normal path that's expected of us. So. We'll just yeah. be running up uh, the side of this lava river here. We have a donation that we want to get and we can do that now. Oh yeah, so before I try attempt to read like a bajillion donations when we get time, I have a couple things for you. One of which, if you all did not notice at the beginning of this run, we did hit $700,000, which is very, very, very exciting. So thank you all for that. Also, another wonderful thing, we are over $140,000 for Wand of Gamelon. That means less than 20K left. Everyone, keep getting those donations in. Love to see it. And uh, Gymnast, if you had to put your donations toward a game or an incentive, what do you think uh, you'd put it toward? Oh, absolutely, Wand of Gamelon. Wand of Gamelon? Like, who doesn't, who doesn't okay. want to see CDI speedruns? They're amazing. Yeah. See, you heard it here from the master himself, Gymnast, the amazing Zelda runner. So this means it has to happen. The amazing Zelda runner who just blew himself up with a bomb. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, of course that was intentional. Um, so we climbed up all of Elden Volcano here. Um, and we made it to the entrance of the Earth Temple, where we're going to save and do more back in time. Uh, so normally, um, when you go through the Elden Volcano, uh, you pick up an item called the Digging Mitts. And the Digging Mitts allow you to dig up dirt patches and get various items like rupees, uh, rare treasures, or in this case, um, to get into the Earth Temple normally, you have to dig up five key pieces so that you can form the key to enter into the Earth Temple. Uh, but instead, we are going to use the power of Reverse Bit Magic, or RBM, uh, to help us get into the Earth Temple instead. So, uh, the Earth Temple door being open um, 
on the Elden map corresponds to the same scene flag that opening up the shed on nighttime Skyloft does. So for this back in time instance, we're going to be sleeping in a bed to help make it nighttime. And then we will be exiting the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to explain the yeah. nighttime stuff. You can only uh, open the shed at night, so we have to do, um, we have to sleep here right now. Um, we also have to leave um, the house with a file that does not have a tunic, uh, because again, back in time likes to crash, and this is the only night layer we can access that doesn't crash, and that's before getting the hero's tunic. And then uh, we're gonna do the thing starting before the event happens, and then the event gonna get applied to Elden instead, and in Elden, it corresponds to opening the Earth Temple door, which is going to trigger this cutscene here. Yeah, and then we skip the cutscene, which places us in Earth Temple. We're going to immediately turn around the camera so that we can um, keep some platforms off camera, uh, because this will affect their cycle and allow us to get onto this one without having to wait for it. Uh, we're going to set up a particularly tricky trick here called, uh, the community likes to call it the Keys Yeet. Uh, where I'm basically going to be using my Skyward Strike to cut the rope that is all the way up here normally, because I don't have the beetle, right, since we didn't uh, get any B-wheel items. But now we nice. can see that the Skyward Strike cut the rope right there. Um, so that's very convenient, because it means that we don't have to get the beetle. <laughs> yeah. Also do some cutscene skips here by being in the air when the cutscene happens. So that's very kind of nice. And... <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I think it's also worth mentioning that at this point, uh, we ha did not get the slingshot and we did not get the beetle. We're not going to be getting bombs or uh, any other B-wheel item for that matter. Yeah. Um, because in this game, you actually, uh, or not actually, but if you try to get other B-wheel items before you get the slingshot, um, the game is actually just going to straight up soft lock. Uh, if you don't already have the slingshot. So by skipping the slingshot, we pretty much have to guarantee skipping every other B-wheel item in the game. Yeah, basically we don't get the B-wheel if we don't get the slingshot first, and without the B-wheel, the game just can't really use items anyway, so... Yeah. So another back-in-time sequence here. Um, and yeah. this time it's gonna be Earth Tem inside Earth Temple. Yeah, gonna, this one is a bit... Yeah. This one's interesting because we actually never want to go off the splash screen uh, until we enter the Night Academy. Uh, if we get off of the splash screen, then we're going to be loading information from file 3, uh, but none of the files that we have will put us on a layer of the Night Academy that won't crash. So uh, instead, to get the layer we want, we can just simply never load any information, and the game will by default give us the layer we want, which is very convenient. Yeah. And we can stay off of the splash screen by using the uh, Wii Motion Plus tutorial prompt so that we can press the A button without ever getting off the splash screen. Otherwise, the, there's like a cutscene and starts off there like 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which put us out of back in time. All right, so seventh text box, start our file. This is going to apply the flag of having talked to Pippet to the Earth Temple. And uh, for this flag to fully take effect, we do have to reload the Earth Temple. Yeah. Uh, you'll see that right here we're watching the cutscene, which normally only plays after the bridge to the second half of the temple has raised up. Um, because we'd s we did set the flag for uh, the bridges being raised up, but the effect doesn't apply unless we reload the temple right here. And so now we can see that the bridges are up, and we can continue yeah. on without having to do the boulder rolling section. Yeah. Just some actors just need to reload, and some don't. That's, that's just how the devs intended it. I think we might have a chance for a donation since we have so many. <laughs> yeah, we can do a donation now. We do have a lot. Sorry, I haven't been keeping up with them because we have a lot of things to read. Well, now we are under 18k for one of Gamelon. So let's get some donations in for once. Here we go. $75 from Vimelia, who says, Let's go, Jimbo. Here's some love from all of Jim Chat. May the RNG be in your favor and get the extending blow. Now let's all show some Zelda love and bring on Gamelon. We also have a $50 donation from Primal Merchant who says, Skyward Sword is my favorite Zelda game of all time. So excited to see it demolished so quickly. We have a $50 donation from Code and Data saying, super hype for Gymnast's run of Skyward Sword and Foo's commentary coming up. Thank you. Wonderful event and an, and an awesome cause. Also, let's get that Wand of Gamelon run met. How much time do you have? Uh, we can do one more. Okay, great. <laughs> $25 from 64-Bit Link, who says, Good luck, gymnast on the run. Here's hoping the Earth Temple keys cooperate. 
putting a it bit did of my cooperate. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, they seemed pretty good to me. <laughs> putting a bit of my money towards Wand of Gamble on. Let's make that run happen. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for those donation messages. I do appreciate it. All right, so we just got the boss key after climbing up some slopes, and now we see the boulder that actually is the boss Scaldera go into the mouth of the dragon to be carried into the boss room. They found everyone's Once favorite again. boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Scaldera is uh, a bit of an interesting boss, uh, especially because of the fact that we never picked up the bomb bag. So uh, we have yeah. to be... We have to do things a little bit differently. Um... Thankfully, the Skaldera Arena does give us bomb flowers, but they're all the way at the top of the arena, uh, where Skaldera doesn't really like to be. Uh, so the upcoming boss fight is sort of going to be like um, a balancing act of sorts between keeping Skaldera up high enough uh, so that we can actually both stun Skaldera with bomb explosions and roll bomb flowers uh, into his mouth from the top of the arena. Yeah, and that's not even all. We also have to... Um but do like exact damage most of the time so we don't get like different phases especially his last phase we uh, want to avoid that as much as we can because he actually will then always roll all the way down and our bomb flowers won't reach him any more then so it's uh, important to do the exact damage here yeah so ideally the fight will only take about three cycles uh, after Girahim finishes his expository dialogue about how <laughs> He's so sad that Zelda keeps on escaping his grasp while he yeah. still spends time talking to Link. I didn't even see Zelda get kidnapped, so I don't even know what he's talking about. That is true. <laughs> we did never see Zelda get kidnapped, so I don't I don't know how she got down here in the first yeah. place. But... Well, it is what Speed it is. Speedrun story. Speed run story progression is fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, yeah, so here uh, we just turn around, run backwards. Uh, we will be positioning ourselves near the bomb flower on the left here and just kind of wait for Skaldera to climb up. Uh, when he's close enough, I'm going to pick up this bomb and then wait for him to get it just the right position to throw it. It's going to stun him. I'm going to pick up the next bomb flower and bowl it down the arena. And then I want to do a quick spin and then a single slash on the eye right here. Okay, I got this side. And then hopefully right here he does not run back up too quickly. Uh, yeah. The RNG can sometimes be bad here, but that was very nice. Wait, so we'll definitely take that. And while and he's burning like this, this uh, you can't really hit him with bombs, so we need to hope that he doesn't burn them. All right, so we did the damage we wanted to. If I could get behind him, okay, uh, well, that, that's fine. Yeah. So just slightly slower. If I got behind him fast enough, um, Skaldera would have just like instantly rolled down here instead of walking all the way to the top. But now with that precise damage count, I can do a Skyward Strike to stun the eye. And then ideally I would have gotten in two uh, quick spins there, but I was a little bit too close um, when I began doing the first one. So the second one didn't make contact in time, but that's okay because I can just finish off the fight with another Skyward Strike right here. So Skaldera is dead. Hitting him. Yeah. His last phase. Nice. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you mess up this fight, that means that we basically, like, have to die and respawn and come back over here, so it's not yeah. uh, very good if that happens. It is possible to uh, soft luck this fight, but, I mean, Jim knows, knows what he's doing, so that doesn't happen. <laughs> Alright, we have time for uh, one donation quickly here as we run up the arena. All right, I'll do my best. There's so many. Oh my gosh. Okay, we have $25 from Saldana who says, Jim always makes an excellent job of providing clear explanations for the weird tricks involved without missing a step on his gameplay. Also, Wand of Gamelond, hype! Hype. Hype. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have finished the Earth Temple. And now we can go and strike the Goddess Crest and get our Amber Tablet to open up uh, the Laneru region. Yeah. I can actually charge a Skyward Strike. There we go. We're almost done with Elden. Almost, almost done with Elden. Yeah. Not quite, though. We do have uh, to do some more setup, unfortunately. The Skylop was not enough for the whole game, uh, so we just have to get a little bit more here in Elden. Yes, yeah, so there's one particular scene flag that we want in Elden, which is uh, talking to a magma kind of near like the beginning of the entrance to Elden Volcano. Yeah. Uh, so we essentially have to go all the way back down the volcano. 
uh, right now. Uh, before we do that though, um, going back down the volcano is going to take some damage, so I'm gonna sit down and heal one heart, and then save at this statue. Uh, because once we get the scene flag, we'll be death warping uh, to get back up here. Now we're gonna go over and do this trick called an extending blow. Uh, it is unfortunately RNG, so hopefully it won't take too many tries. Yeah. You'll know when it works though, because it's... <laughs> You'll obvious. know when it works. We'll try to get him to just be on the edge. Uh, almost, almost right there. Just be on the edge and then the game will uh, delete some memory of the uh, Bokoblin, which is gonna be useful. Alright, so unfortunately the RNG did not work out for us there, so I have to reset and try it again. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish with this trick is I'm trying to quickspin the Bokoblin in such a way that it lands on the very edge uh, of the ledge that it's standing on. Uh, the problem with that is that the Bokoblin has, or the, the knockback distance that the Bokoblin goes whenever you attack it is random. Uh, there are four different knockback distances it has, so we just kind of have to get the correct one uh, if we want to go down the volcano here correctly. Uh, that's definitely not going to work. Try over here with this one again. All right, there, there we, go. we go. Nice. And four hearts. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that trick right there is the extending blow, uh, where we quite literally just yeeted ourselves down the volcano so that we could go watch this cutscene for the scene flag that we wanted yeah. and then death warp into the lava. Just want to so meet the what lava. happens? Uh, during that trick is that when the Bokoblin lands on that very specific spot on the edge of the ledge, uh, the game tries to begin the process of killing the Bokoblin even though it didn't actually, uh, like, fall over the ledge. So the game kills the Bokoblin, but we still have the ability to target and, like, perform a final blow on the Bokoblin. And uh, if you try to perform a final blow while the Bokoblin is already dead, uh, the game just defaults to directing Link's final blow to the origin of the map, which are the coordinates 0, 0, 0. Yeah. Uh, which is why we got flung all the way down the volcano, because that's where 0, 0, 0 happens to be an Elden Volcano. Very convenient that we can actually reach the flag we need with that extending blow. So right now we're going to do another sequence of back in time. And uh, this time we're actually gonna say um, basically goodbye to 5.3. Uh, we're gonna see it a couple times, but uh, main gameplay now is gonna happen on file 1. So first of all, we're gonna again uh, bonk this tree to get the gate open, but this time we're gonna collect a rupee with file 3. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna update the inventory information on file 3, and that's gonna allow us to place the amber tablet here because we uh, want to keep playing on file one but file one doesn't have the amber tablet so we have to rvm it onto file one here so we can actually reach Luneiru. and keep in mind uh file one is before the tunic and before saving the loft wing so um yes yeah, so we'll, we'll suddenly lose our tunic but it's just because we switched files that we're playing on uh, one other small thing that uh, you might see me do is um, I'll sometimes start a file right before a loading transition back in time, like right here. Um, for some reason, doing that will just speed up loading the next area uh, in back in time, so it saves like a few frames most of the time. Occasionally it can save up to like one second, but most of the time it's just a small yeah. time save. Alright, so just like the beginning of the run, I'm gonna start my file about one second after the light hits the clouds to open up the pillar. And uh, now we can, uh, now that we have the pillar on this file, we can uh, fly to the sky and then make our way over to Lanayru. Every time for a donation before the crazy stuff is going to really happen. <laughs> yeah. Already, we're well, just we... going to be flying here. Okay, good to know. We are less than fourteen thousand away from Wand of Gamelon. You're making it happen. Keep it up. I I believe in you all. All right, we have a $50 donation from Lord Nightmare who says, Jim's run of Skyward Sword is something really special to watch, and his explanations of how everything works are very understandable. This donation goes towards Wand of Gamelon because every Zelda game deserves a chance to be seen at a GDQ. Save the frames, beat the cancer. We have time for one more? Yes, we do. Okay, great. <laughs> we have a $502 donation, which is amazing from Cy Marth, who says, good luck on the run, Jim. Shout outs to 502 and the Zelda community. All right. Thank you too for those wonderful donation messages as well. 
so now we have entered Laneru, which is where the even more complicated stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the reason why the game is uh, so fast now is gonna happen here. All right. Uh, so first of all, we're gonna start things off with another instance of reverse bit magic. So we're gonna save at a statue. Uh, thankfully, the game provides us some bomb flowers over here that we can die with, so dying does not take very long. Then we will once again reach the game over screen, and I will continue and reset to begin back in time. Uh, for this next back in time sequence, we're going to want to go visit uh, our friend, the demon man, Batro. Uh, Batro lives in uh, like this little house on the underside of Skyloft. And so we're going to be taking some flags from File 3 to help us get there. Specifically, we're going to be taking um, the flag of the Earth Temple door being open, which is going to open up the shed here on Skyloft. And we're also taking the uh, flag that we got after the extending blow with the magma, which is actually going to open up Batro's door. Because by default, Batro's door is not open. Uh, so if we want to have it be open, we need to find that scene flag in some other area on some other file uh, to have yeah. it open up in back in time here. Just remember when we like opened the Earth Temple door, we did an RBM with the shed opening, so it just makes sense that it, you know, connects back. <laughs> yeah. And here he is. He's pretty scary. Yeah. Oh wait, I know. I can protect us with the Me Motion Plus tutorial. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Now we're safe. Whew. Now it's not scary. So once he finishes screaming, uh, we just have to do a jump slash and he'll yeah. be scared, and we'll realize that he's not the scary man we thought he was. And he also has a ton of dialogue right now. Um, so if we want to have one more donation being read right now, we can, because we're just going to be RBMing at the end of the dialogue here. Sure thing. Uh, I did have one that I saw. It's a $25 anonymous donation that says, Well, excuse me, princess. Let's get that wand of Gamelon incentive. And then one for you. I also have a $25 donation from Dylan Fitz, who says, Everyone in the Skyward Sword Discord is going crazy over this run. Keep up the excellent work, Jim. Oh, thank you very much. Hope you guys are having a good time. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, Back there, uh, after we did the RBM, I went over and had a small conversation with a dead robot. And then Phi came out and said, yes, this robot is dead. And then uh, she went back away. Um, <laughs> the reason that we had to check that robot is because we needed to uh, perform what we call committing our scene flags. Uh, so in some regions, scene flags won't immediately take effect once we do uh, reverse bit magic. So what we have to do is we have to make some other scene flag change in the area for the change to properly be applied, which is why we just had to talk to the uh, dead robot there. And then uh, on file three now, because we already used the magma cutscene scene flag that we had earlier, we're going to come back into the Earth Temple where we have another scene flag that here that we want to use for an upcoming uh, yeah. instance of reverse bit magic. Basically changing scene on file three, just as we did earlier with Skyloft. Because we need these flags now and not the Elden flags anymore. The, yeah. Yeah, so this uh, next back in time instance is going to be pretty short. Uh, this You've heard us mention reverse bit warps a lot uh, throughout this run. This time we're going to do a regular bit warp, or just, just a bit warp. Uh, <laughs> so a reverse bit warp, you might remember, was when we started our file and then uh, loaded a new area to put our file in that area. Uh, a regular bit warp is where we're going to start our file and save at a statue at the same time. Uh, this is going to bring the back-in-time coordinates of the saved statue onto our file. So our file still spawns on the same map, but it instead has the uh, coordinates of where we saved at in back-in-time instead when loading in. And just like Elden, uh, we have a giant swath of out-of-bounds collision here in Laneiru that we're going to be using to walk all the way back near the entrance. So uh, we definitely have some time for two donations right now. Alrighty, did you say two or 40? Because I could do either, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, only two, maybe three if you make them quick. No, it's all good. Um, we have a $150 donation from Sabil who says, hut, hut, yeah! Good luck, Jim, and hype for Wand of Gamelon. 
We also have a $250 donation from Ryoku2, says big gymnast fan here. Glad to see him on AGDQ live for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, yeah. About one more? Yeah, we can do one more. Yes, all right. We have a, another $250 donation from Meester Crease. <laughs> Saying, second time watching Skyward Sword speedrun, and it still blows my mind. Let's beat cancer and make the world a better place. Donation goes to Wand of Gamelon. I believe we are, oh my gosh, we're so close to hitting the 10K away. Very close. Anyway. All right. So we have now reached the Laneru Gorge. Yeah. Uh, so this region in Laneru is not one that you're supposed to reach until much later in the game. Uh, because the last region. Uh, what did you say? Basically, the last region we uh, yeah, we ever. Right. Uh, and so this is the region where you normally go and uh, like get the Laneru Song of the Hero, uh, which is one of the last quests in the game before you reach the end. And we don't need the Song of the Hero, but there's one very useful um, mini game here that you can take part in after you get the piece of the Song of the Hero, which is Boss Rush. And so everything that we do here uh, in the Laneru Gorge is basically in an effort to begin, or to have the ability to play the boss rush mini game. Yeah. The game so to is... start things off, yeah. we're going to be doing uh, an RBM that's going to get rid of a very specific rock that's in our way that we can't blow up because we don't have bombs uh, near where we need to blow up the rock. Yeah, basically, it's going to be uh, quite hard to make the uh, boss rush be available to us. Um, we have to do a couple things. So in order to get the the, the the right layer where we can talk to the Thunder Dragon, we need to finish the Minecart Escort. And in order to um, be able to talk to the Thunder Dragon, have him be uh, alive, uh, we need to t trigger a certain Phi attack that only happens on the layer after the Minecart Escort. Unfortunately, though, we can't really complete the Minecart Escort right now for a bunch of reasons. And the main one being we don't have any items for it. <laughs> Yeah. So we have to basically uh, RBM our way through. <laughs> um, and this one's going to be for making us able to finish the Minecart Escort. It's RBM. RBM and Rock away, we couldn't bomb otherwise. So yeah, fair and big here. Um, this time we're going to use 5-3 to enter behind the temple that we have set up perfectly for this. This is going to give us uh, layer 1 because it has a tunic uh, where we can save the Goron. And file 3 also has a flag that activates this cutscene here, uh, which is the, the reason why we entered uh, Earth Temple in the first place. And now um, we only have to commit it, and you'll see which rock it's gonna go away. Yeah, so it's that rock in the background. When I bonk into this wall, the rock just kind of explodes. Uh, that's what we're talking about with committing our flags, because bonking into that wall reveals a rupee, which sets a flag because the game doesn't want you to farm rupees there. And at the exact same frame that we set that flag was when the game realized, oh yeah, we have this other flag to blow up the rock. And so it just blows up the rock at that same time too. Yeah. So that, uh, that rock was blocking the path of the minecart, so if we didn't blow it up, the minecart wouldn't be able to get to the end of the track where we need to get it. So next up is going to be an RVM that's going to start the minecart uh, escort. So we can start it um, right now just because of the layer issues. Um, but we can start a weird RBM. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so first of all, it's gonna be another uh, Farron bit. Uh, most of these are going to be, um, because it's just a lot of flags there we can get. So, yeah. yeah. I was just gonna say that, like, uh, the flags that we're getting in Farron, we unfortunately can't get on Skyloft, because, yeah. like, if we tried to get them, the game would just crash, like, well before uh, we would be able to get them, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, that's just what we have to deal with. And then, uh, unfortunately, we didn't even find this flag on Skyloft uh, so far, which is sad. But yeah. Um, so, again, loading the sky uh, with our setup file, which is still file 2. Um, and then we're going to dive into the Farron Pillar. And this time, uh, we want to save Machi, because, again, we want to save the animals. Not sure if okay. Machi's not quite the animal, but part way at least. <laughs> yeah, Machi, so yeah, Machi's the first Kikui that you're normally yeah. supposed to save uh, in the Farron Woods when you first arrive there normally. Uh, we skipped that entire sequence earlier, but as Pepper says, you know, this is a good run because we have to save the animals. Yeah, so we go back for it. <laughs> we have to do that. Um, so, 
basically saving the ma Machi and talking uh, to him is gonna allow us to uh, start the minecart. So that's nice. So again, uh, loading into sealed grounds here, this time with 5-3. Also doesn't have the cutscene, though we don't have to watch a cutscene, which is the main reason for loading. And then we're going to enter Fair Woods. This time we have to enter it uh, on uh, layer 1 in order to uh, save Machi. Otherwise, uh, he won't be there. Yeah, so I specifically need to enter Farron Woods with File 2. File 1 or File 3 is not going to work for this. Yeah. File 2 has the flags for that. So. And, and I want to make sure I don't get off the splash screen for just yeah. a little bit here. It's also important to um, have File 1 uh, selected before killing these Bacoblins. Um, and, you know, just so the game is like, okay, good, yeah, okay, you, you killed the Bacoblins here. Um, and then when you talk to him, uh, he'll actually make his dialogue for being rescued. And then we're just gonna start after the f and then close the first text box. Yep. And so that's since uh, the temporary flag uh, for the minecart that we want. Uh, this time for committing, we're just gonna blow up this boulder. Uh, if we can get the bomb flower to blow it up. Yeah. Luckily, we have the bomb flow here though, because we don't have any bombs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We could also, also nice bonk into like the pillar that's in the background yeah. there if we wanted to, but it's just very convenient. Bomb, bomb cactus is faster. Uh, one thing to also note is that when we die here uh, in the linear gorge, it's faster to die into the void versus dying on the ground uh, because Link doesn't have to go through his whole like attempt to get back up and fall down animation that normally happens. Yeah. All right, so I have to remember to copy file one to file three here. We do not need file three anymore. At least the old file three. Yeah, the old file three. All right yeah, here we're gonna is... do. Go yeah, you, you can explain it. Okay, so right here we're gonna do another bit warp and another abuse of the out out of bounds um, area. So we're gonna use the other Acad uh, academy statue here again and do the starting and saving at the same time, and we're gonna be out of bounds in. Um, Lanero Gorge. And the main reason is we want to reach the last checkpoint of the Minecart Escort. Um, and with this out of bounds movement, we can actually reach that right here. Yeah, so we're going to be running for like 30 seconds. So we can probably sneak in a quick donation here while this is happening. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> we are less than 8K away from Wand of Gamble. And I believe we can make this happen before the end of this run, by the way. And we have a $20 donation from Uncle Jerry. Saying Jim's Zelda runs were what first got me into speedrunning, and I'm so happy to finally donate during one of his runs. Wrong game, but ask for my help. Hoi! <laughs> <laughs> Put this toward Gamelon because more Zelda is always more good. All right, so right here, um, the collision unfortunately does not last forever. Uh, so it does end about here, but if I line myself up correctly, I can jump up to this higher portion of the collision right here. Uh, and this allows me to finally get to where the minecart normally is. Yeah. Uh, well, at least last so for the, Yeah. Uh, so for the last checkpoint of the minecart escort, um, I have to get near the door that the checkpoint starts at. Uh, to do that, I'm going to have to go through quite a lot of quicksand. Um, so I will be needing to go... Here, you need to make sure I don't take any fall damage here because that would be very bad. Yeah. And then I'm gonna do this trick called the break slide right here, which allows me to slide through the sand at a much faster rate than I should normally be able to. Um, I basically paused right there so that I could hold Z and um, slightly down on the control stick. Uh, this will cause Link's speed to become negative, and when Link's speed is negative, the quicksand doesn't slow him down because the quicksand is only programmed to slow down Link's speed if Link's speed is positive. So we got the full force of Link's momentum back there going through the quicksand, which allows us to get to the door and get the minecart free. And then this is where the boulder was that we blew up earlier, otherwise the minecart would stop here. And a uh, very cool thing that's going to come up, we just have to wait for the minecart to reach there within the next minute, so let's hear those donations! Alrighty, guess what? There are a lot. Okay, so we have a... <laughs> $500 donation from John Ness saying, so excited to see Gymnast running Zelda for such a great cause. Huge thanks to the runners, staff, and all the viewers that make AGQ such a success. 
a quick peek in one of Camelon. We are almost at 7K away. We can do it. Okay, next, <laughs> next donation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we have a uh, $50 donation from Shady Ashley who says, this Skyward Sword run is intense. We've gone back in time so much. I don't even know what time it is anymore. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep up the impressive work, gymnast. But this donation towards Wand of Gamelon, of course. I wonder what's for dinner. All right, so we successfully waited for the minecart uh, to be put in place. So now we can save our first file, go back to our third file that we copied during the previous bit warp. And on this file, we're going to go get the goddess harp because the goddess harp is very necessary for uh, being able to complete the game fast. Yeah, so, it's the lowest um, race to get off time. Right. So if you'll remember, um, back at the beginning of the Lanayru region, we did that whole reverse bit magic sequence with the demon man Batro, who was very scary. Uh, but he actually does something very nice for us. Uh, by RBMing his text, we can set the flag for having visited the Temple of Time statue in Lanayru. Right? So the Temple of Time statue is uh, a statue you're not supposed to be able to access until you've beaten the Lanayru mining facility. But because of RBM, we now just have access to this statue in the top left of the region here. And this essentially allows us to skip, you know, the entire Lanayru mines, the entire Lanayru desert, uh, as well as the entire Lanayru mining facility. Well, I mean, we're going to be going into yeah. the mining facility for like a second. Uh, because to trigger the cutscene where we get the harp, we have to leave the linear mining facility. But thankfully, just, this just works by like going in and going out again. And we will skip a cutscene with the two button, and then I will skip a cutscene or attempt to skip a cutscene with another side hop uh, after this save prompt right here. All right, very nice. Or the backflip. Yeah. Again, two uh, so, frame window here. So, good job. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to save this file here, and then I'll be dying with this Octorok. And now it is time for what is probably the hardest uh, instance of reverse bit magic in the run. It's time for the Harpstrom RBM. Uh, so for most of the RBMs that we've done, you know, they've been things like, you know, start our file and like close a text box at the same time, or like, you know, push the gravestone for entering Earth Temple early. Uh, for this one, I'm actually going to have to start my file while playing the harp um, in the sealed grounds. So it's a bit tricky just because of uh, like having to use the harp motion controls at the same time as we're starting our file, but we'll do our best here. The good thing about this RBM though is that we're going to see a lot of grooves, so... <laughs> yes, there will be lots of grooves during this RBM. So you? there's yes. that. <laughs> I know Kung Fu's excited. Grooves is the best! Yeah. So first of all, we're gonna load the sky as we uh, did before with file two, and enter the Farron Pillar. But this time, we're gonna enter the Farron Pillar with file three, and file three just got the harp. And in gameplay, after you get the harp, the next thing that's gonna happen when you enter the Farron Pillar is the Groose cutscene. And it, you know, that the same thing will happen if we enter the Farron Pillar with file three. So that's what we're gonna do here right now. And then we're going to see the Groose cutscene, and the Groose cutscene is going to put us where the Groose cutscene normally puts us, uh, which is behind the temple. Um, and uh, there we can then just talk to him, and uh, that's going to be nice to act uh, activate some story events that's going to allow us to get the cutscene of uh, the stuff before raising the gate of time. <laughs> Probably also important to note that uh, the reason why we, like, um, we don't, we can't get the statue um, select screen because that crashes in back in time. So it's very nice to be able to land in back and uh, behind a temple here with this cutscene, which is it's just a little bit faster than landing in sealed grounds. Because again, the statue select screen is always going to crash, so we're going to avoid that. But right here we're going to keep the flag from talking to Cruz because again, that's going to activate this event here. It's going to happen. It's going to important to stay on the splash screen right here because otherwise we're gonna um, not activate this event and we're gonna hear some nice uh, Groose noises. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, some text here. Yeah, so uh, the specific event that we're RBMing here is um, learning how to play the harp with Impa. Uh, so normally what how the game like makes this work is you play the harp with Impa and after you finish the tutorial, it sets um, a flag that says you've completed the harp tutorial, pretty much. 
And so we essentially want to get that flag onto our file here on file one. And hopefully it'll work uh, as soon as we get through this. Take out my harp, get strumming. I think that worked. If we yeah, get we'll the fight text here. Yeah. All right. Yes. Very good. There we go. This is the one time we're very happy to hear Fi speak. Because <laughs> <laughs> if Fi doesn't speak there, it means that you messed it up and that you yeah. have to go try and do it all again. Well, the but now, text, yeah. can talk we can to go the visit here. our friend the Thunder Dragon. So because of the Phi text, uh, the Thunder Dragon is now considered to be healed, and we can activate his Boss Rush minigame. Uh, so in the Boss Rush minigame, uh, you normally aren't supposed to be able to like activate this minigame until you're way later into like the game's story progression. Uh, so the game does make certain assumptions about what flags you have set right now, and that's going to come to our advantage here. Yeah. So the first boss that we're going to be fighting, well, it, fighting in quotes, is uh, Imprisoned <laughs> One. Um, uh, do you want to explain like how the flags here work? Yes. Yeah. So basically, what happens is, in order to make the fight work in the sealed grounds, the Imprisoned One fight, um, and the game thinking you have certain story events uh, already done. Uh, the game needs to unset certain um, story events. So for this one to work, you know, um, you don't want to have a Crusinator in here. So, <laughs> nice. Um, so that's going to be unset. And after we die or finish the fight, the game will then put these flags back because obviously the game doesn't want you to keep away the story progression you just um, acquired. So it's going to give you these uh, story flags back. And now we have them. So now we have... Uh, beaten Ancient Sister, which uh, spawns the Grusinator, and we have also uh, beaten Fire Sanctuary, which changes some text in Grus, which is why it also gets unset. Yep. All right, so now following Imprisoned 1, we're going to go and fight, fight in very large quotes, Imprisoned 2. Um, yeah. As Papernicus said, we can either like finish the fight or just die. Obviously, dying is a lot faster than having to finish an Imprisoned fight, so that's the course that we choose. Yeah. Um, we're also going to get a random message from Phi here, which yep. has nothing to do with this fight, but just kind of by consequence happens. Yeah, it's and another we'll... flag from Imprisoned One that cuts it. Yeah, and then once again, uh, we will be dying to the Imprisoned's feet in, yeah. uh, in my splits uh, for the Skyward Sword 90% run. This is my death by feet split. <laughs> yeah. So the important part here was dying to Imprisoned Two, not Imprisoned One. Uh, but we needed to die to Imprison 1 to make Imprison 2 not crash, because if you don't have a Grusinator um, in Imprison 2, the game is going to crash. And as I said earlier, um, Imprison 1 does set the Grusinator being um, out in the sealed grounds. And uh, beating Imprison 2 is going to allow us to open the Gate of Time, which is basically allowing us to reach the end of the game. Um, right, yeah. yeah. So uh, there's one more thing we have to do. We have to fly back to Skyloft. Um, because we need a very specific scene flag uh, for the next back in time we're going to do, which is the last back in time sequence, which, as Parnas yeah. mentioned, is going to be the one where we open up the gate of time. Uh, so we need, um, we once again need the scene flag that we got all the way back at the beginning of the game when uh, we rescued Professor Hornwell's uh, Remlet, uh, because that scene flag is what allows us to target the gate of time while we're in back in time. And it saves a lot of time, so it's worth our time. <laughs> right, so yeah. So we're going to save and quit here. Uh, it's a lot faster to just uh, save and quit and then die with file three, because file three is uh, still saved out here uh, at the Temple of Time statue with the Octorok nearby. Yeah, and only two hearts. <laughs> So yeah, this uh, RBM is a little bit complicated, um, but it's mostly understandable, I think. Uh, first of all, at least, well, uh, <laughs> we'll try, we're trying our best. Um, so first of all, we're going to do back in time. And again, bit save file two to get our loft wing and be able to uh, call a loft wing. Oh. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I forgot that back in time here is a lot more precise than most areas. For some reason, yeah. um, in the Lanayru region, like if you just watch the harp cutscene and you try to do back in time, I need to do like the reset on my Wii console immediately after pressing continue. 
Um, most back in times, you have like a full second after pressing continue to make it work, but this one's only like a few frames, so this yeah. should work now. There we go. There we go. But yeah, bit saving photo two and entering the sky. And then we're going to use the um, Gruz cutscene again. And uh, again, we didn't even raise the get of time yet. So we have to do both raising and opening in this uh, one RBM here. And luckily we can combine them, which is quite fast. So uh, first of all, again, we're going to go to the Gruz cutscene and activate the event that happens after. And this time we're going to directly open the splash screen when we enter the sealed temple to um, stop the cutscene from happening that we use the other time. Uh, so we can actually just go to and raise the gate of time. So, yeah. Alright, so while we're flying and diving here, we probably have time for another one or two donations real quick. Alrighty, so we have, we have some really good donations right now. Uh, we are just about 3,000 away. We're so, so close. For now, we have a $10 donation from Giga saying... Basically, we're going to save our donation and then open file three and reload into the AGDQ scene with the Wand of Gamelon flag set. Exactly. That's correct. <laughs> See, Jim gets it. I'm sorry. I found that one really funny. Good one. Um, we also have a $100 donation from Nat's fan who says, this run looks confusing, but it's all explained in the official time, the Zelda timeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Can, you guys don't remember where Link died 22 times in Skyward Sword? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we get a $5 train going to close out Wand of Gamelon? <laughs> yeah, you can do one more. Awesome. We have a uh, $15 donation from... Where's what I'm looking for? Oh, no, $25 donation from Irvi, who says, a haiku, great Skyward Sword run. Keep donations coming for... Wand of Gamelon. Excellent. <laughs> All right, so back into the sealed temple we go. Uh, this time I need to get off the splash screen immediately. I'm going to be saving file one right here at this bird statue, and then I will be entering into uh, the Ballad of the Goddess Circle. And because of the scene flags that we have on file one, we're just instantly going to get the Ballad of the Goddess. Yay! Yay. And this is going to start the Gate of Time raising cutscene. And now that the Gate of Time has risen, we can use the flags on file one once again to allow us to target the Gate of Time. And then I will start my file, slash the Gate of Time with the Skyward Strike, and this will open the Gate of Time on file one and allow us to proceed to the past without us having to complete the Lanayra Mining Facility, the Ancient Cistern, the Sand Ship, the Fire Sanctuary, the entire Song of the Hero, Sky Keep. <laughs> Absolutely none of that is necessary, and that's... More or less, uh, well, that's one of the big reasons we can skip so much of this game. The other reason yeah. is the uh, RBM that we did about 45 minutes ago before we went to the Elden region. Uh, that RBM opened up uh, the door to the past here, or the door to Hylia's realm, uh, which is basically the final five minutes of the game right here. So uh, that individual RBM saves about 75 minutes on its own because... Being able to open this door early skips the entire Song of the Hero and the Skykeep dungeon. And because we're on hero mode, we can uh, hold two to skip what would be a softlock cutscene. But thanks to cutscene, skipping is not. And now, it is time for probably the most tense five minutes of yeah. the entire run with the final boss, Connelair, right here. You want to start with some good news? Because <laughs> <laughs> we just hit Wand of Gamelon. Oh, nice. very nice. It. Congratulations, everybody! Awesome. Great job. Okay, you can focus now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right, let me just get back to hacking and slashing all these guys here. Oh my yeah. god. They are so. they are going really far back. Okay, that was not uh, that was a bit scary. Okay, so, yeah. so unfortunately, I took uh, two hearts of damage from those blue capped bacoblins, and I'm going to be taking two more hearts of damage up here. Um, because I'm going to attempt to do what's known as the Horde Skip, where I run up the shield of the Moblin that's going to spawn on the left side here to skip an entire revolution around the spiral. Just like this. Nice. Down we go. I don't have the Sailcloth, so I can't prevent myself from taking damage, and now we're only on two hearts for the rest of the run. Yes. Uh, good luck to me. I will need Yeah, good luck for sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, he has only six hearts. Luckily, he does have the two Master Swords, so at least uh, he can break the blockade of these Bokoblins. But they still have a longer range than him for some reason, even though he has a true Master Sword, so he has to be very careful. Um, 
And there's also these aimbot arch archers next uh, coming up, so um, he's gonna make sure that he's not gonna get hit by those. Because dying here is quite unfortunate. So we're gonna hope here. Everyone needs to get their energy to gym right now. Um, as we're going into the final fight of Horde here. After that, it's mostly safe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have died even here before, so... Yeah. We're, we're still on edge. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Once we once we finish this Horde fight, though, then we won't have to redo it again. Yeah, because it there's like a checkpoint there. So if we die, then we're just gonna get put to back to that checkpoint. And use Skyward you Strikes. Try to use Skyward Strikes spin attacks to get rid of all these Bacot ones. They're very far away. Okay, there we go. Nice. And then we will have Link stand in the evil energy that's yeah. not supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be here, yeah. It's because we never did seal grounds uh, and never hit the spike at the very start. Alright, so this is the Gear Him 3 fight. Uh, this first phase is basically just slash him off the edge and then do a very epic looking final blow into his chest a bunch of times. Yeah. Even funnier if you move backwards and you jump like really far. <laughs> oh, that's uh, quite funny. But we want to go fast, so we're gonna do a little uh, a tiny one and jump down. It's a little bit faster. Make sure to avoid his kick. And then nice. we don't want to slash along the line that the orbs he presents makes. We want to slash perpendicular to them to keep knocking him back. Yeah. So press now, face down. Platform is going to go down, and Gear Him is going to land in the evil energy. Even though consumed. this wasn't intended, I really like this because it's great yeah. foreshadowing for the fact that Girahim is actually an evil character in this game. <laughs> great, really? Yeah. See, wow. the evil energy just gives him an entirely new aura. Alright, we're gonna quick spin his sword away, do some Skyward Stabs, which is a Skyward Strike that we stab for, do one cycle this phase. Also uh, black. Yeah, the, the evil energy causes a lot of lag here if it's taking up most of the viewport, so we do have to deal with that time loss. And then Gearhim brings out the big boy sword, which we have to break if we want to stab him again. So we have to make sure that we once again go perpendicular to the sword. And that's Gearhim 3. Yeah, only one boss to go. Only one boss. Alright, so to make this fight a little bit more interesting, um, I'm actually going to put on a blindfold for it. Uh, once we go through this text right here, uh, doing this fight blindfolded, I actually think is a lot of fun. So, <laughs> good luck. I think I'll try it here doing this marathon run. Get my blindfold on. Put my headphones back so I can actually hear things. Can I say I'm really hyped for this? <laughs> and now it's just listening. Good first phase. And now we are on to the second phase, which involves the lightning. Now, once again, be listening. And time. time. Stage. Nice. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Now my hair's all messed up. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that was awesome. But, yeah, that was The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword in however long that run took, because I don't have the timer anywhere. <laughs> uh, 126.45. All right, nice. very good. 59 minutes faster than the run one year ago, roughly. So... Wow. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much a showcase of all the progress that uh, the Skyward Sword community has made over the past year with all of our uh, various discoveries and things to help make the game faster. Uh, I'd like to shout out my fellow co-commentator Copernicus for commentating this run for me, and also for being uh, someone who found a lot of the techniques that uh, we got to show you guys today for this run. So thank you very much, Copernicus. Thank you, thank you for inviting me here. It was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah. I think no Skyward Sword Marathon round would be complete without shouting out Azer as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Azer is uh, 
is like a huge help to the community with just, you know, testing and documenting all of the different flags that this game has so that we can uh, make the routes that we do for this game. Azer is like basically the routing genius behind <laughs> uh, what you guys saw here today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, do you have anyone you want to shout out, Pepper? Yeah, so one person I definitely want to shout out is Alepilog, who did a lot of reverse engineering for this game and making it more accessible for like other glitch hunters like me. Um, and also for uh, making a randomizer to this game, which is also very cool. Um, so you can definitely check that out, as well as uh, our speedrun uh, Discord. We have a lot of cool categories, not just any percent. All of them have uh, very cool tricks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you very much to GDQ for allowing me to run this game for a third time in the last two and a half years. Uh, gives us a great way to show off all the progress that we've made in that time. So uh, yeah. Hope you guys continue to raise a lot of money to kick cancer's butt. I'm sure we'll be doing that very well in the future. And uh, yeah, I think that is it from me. So once again, thank you guys very much, and I will see you guys later. Later.